You ain't never gonna land a publishing deal for your novel, and here's why. Burton Rasko, one of the harshest literary critics in the last century and perhaps a model of mine, says in the joys of reading, if you open a book and find that the writer is trying to impress you with his knowledge of long, unusual words, or by his use of foreign phrases, close the book quickly with no sense of loss or of immediacy or of having missed anything, for the author has not yet learned how to write and perhaps never will, and there is no reason for you to offer yourself as a sounding board for his or her incompetence. This statement is probably the first reason why you will never land a publishing deal. You write until you can no longer find any more synonyms in the dictionary. The second is that you think in crazy talk. This is what you need to understand. Publishers are not your enemy. It might sound obvious to some of you, but there has never been a discussion related to publishing without someone mentioning how the publishers are laying out plans to take out all a new talent. This is how the argument goes. Publishers will always consider an established author with a good following before they consider younger and upcoming writers. They actively deter resources from seeking new writers and put it into marketing other books written by famous authors and even in the off chance they publish a work of a new writer they don't market their books resulting in a flop that can compromise the author's career this argument has one thing going for it it's glamorous and offers an escape code it is in all actuality a sure way to never improve your writing of course the publishers will focus on established authors with a stable track record before checking new talent that's not a negative thing it's how things have been since the days of charles dickens <laughs> The negative thing is believing in this diluted thought process. As I said prior, it offers a fitting scapegoat and sells a fantasy that you, as an unpublished writer, are not the problem and that the evil man on the chair is keeping you down. You don't have to improve, you're already perfect as you are. It's the man with the cigar who's keeping your watertight manuscript in the slush pile. Now don't take my words negatively, that's because if you do, they're probably for you. To sit in your cozy house and say that you can't overcome gatekeepers just because someone is sabotaging you is to admit that you can't do what Stephen King did. There's no one sabotaging you number one and number two, no one has ever given Stephen King a wink and opened a back door for him into the publishing world. He had to work hard at it. The same goes for J.K. Rowling, for Ernest Hemingway, for William Faulkner, Jennifer Egan and all of the prolific writers of our age. They all had to go through this harsh and rigorous process. You can phrase it as the literary world's take on survival of the fittest. If you believe you can't improve enough to meet the publisher's demand, then you will probably never land a publishing deal. Understand that you can push your writing to a point where you cannot be ignored, to a point where you're so good they turn away from the stars and look at you. This is what I have to say, okay? Do not aim for a scapegoat. Aim for rejection letters. My writing started to improve the moment I was told this. I was giving myself an excuse, specifically that I'm not a bad writer. I was just a victim. Rise above. Don't be stupid. Say if whatever author whose writing is clearly what they feed to garbage trucks managed to land a publishing deal some 40 years ago, then surely I can. In other words, aim for rejection letters. Perfect. Perfect. This one has been a disease of mine for so long. I would go up to my sister, ask her to read my clearly flawless first draft, and when she comes back two days later and points out all the rampant plot holes ruining the story, I would retreat into my skin and, in her cases, throw bad words at her. What an asshole I was. Don't be the literal equivalent of a turtle shell. Be smart and take criticism. Sit for a moment and think about what's going on when someone tells you their thoughts about your unfinished work. It doesn't matter who they are, all that matters is that they are critiquing your your work. Step 1. He or she has to take time out of their life and read your manuscript. Understand that it's not a finished work and that they're doing it solely for you and not for entertainment purposes. Step 2. He or she fully commits to reading your rough at best manuscript. Step 3. He or she sits down, thinks about the drivel they have just read and brings you a neatly written critique. Step 4. You basically refuse to take the critique into account and simply go to have a worse manuscript. Step 5. You release it and then get irrevocably fingered by the general public. Believe me, the general public are mobs. They have no mercy. You're thinking of somewhere else.
I will ask kindly that you go and perform the following experiment. Get a toddler, no older than 3 or 4 years, let them try the best philosophy and write whatever that child vomits. Once you do that, without editing it and without seeking any beta readers, try to publish it. I guarantee you that you can publish that work, self-publish it that is. Self-publishing from what I've observed is a surefire way to keep living in a habitual cycle of vomiting out lousily written books. Hear me out because there's definitely an argument to be had for self-publishing. It's not as terrible as I'm describing it. Amanda Hawking, E.L. James, Mark Dawson, Lisa Genova, all of them are successful self-published authors. And most of them are way, way, way more successful than I am. Some of them, E.L. James particularly, have sold a number of copies I'll probably never outdo. I'm not hating on self-publishing because it's clearly a viable option. I'm hating on the naive assumption, and I say naive assumption because it's the sort of decision that one makes with a scarce attention to facts. Anyhow. Let me gather my thoughts. I'm hating on the naive assumption that once you self-publish your book, it will be a smooth sailing. I'm also hating on the other equally naive assumption that once you traditionally publish your book, it will be a smooth sailing. In this business of writing, there's never a smooth ride. This is why you shouldn't go for self-publishing. It requires a different set of skills than most who go for writing career have. In other words, it requires an adept eye for numbers and statistics. Something most writers don't have and mostly is left to the publishers. You have to be a calculator peasant. All of these self-published authors have spent a chunk of their life building a platform good enough to give their books a smooth sailing once they're launched, especially in the first few months of release. They're the sort of people who are willing to do whatever it takes. If you're ready to do what they're doing, to spend hours working on your author platform and probably develop some mental ickiness along the way, then go ahead and enjoy your smooth ride. For the rest of us normal folk, I will say that self-publishing is a tumor of a thought. Hear me out. I said you could self-publish a child's take on Aristotle and by stating that, I aim to display the fundamental way self-publishing hinders a writer's ability to improve. It doesn't require anything from them. You can self-publish anything. A rough first draft, a slightly better second draft, heck, you could even publish a chapter and call it a book. Whatever you wish, without any attention to critique, you can self-publish that. That's why you can't land a traditional publishing deal. You're just considering a different route that requires a different set of skills from the author than traditional publishing. Traditional publishing is about racking up improvement over a long period and delivering a novel good enough for someone to throw their money at. In other words, you have to give publishers a reason to market your novel. In self-publishing, you do it yourself. That has worked wonders for most people I've mentioned above, but if I'm being honest, I advise that you work on improving your writing to a degree where you can traditionally publish instead of taking a cheap shortcut. Self-publishing is like giving your professor a middle finger. It's a surefire way to not improve your grades. Let's take Fifty Shades of Grey as an example. The prose, which is something I spent hours obsessing over in my writing bunker, feels like the sort of stuff someone would hand to their child so they can show them what terrible prose writing looks like. It's so bad it killed a few words for me. And I will never use those words because it reminds me of that cringy ass prose. Let's read a few of her best work. I sit out and reach for the orange juice, drinking it down too quickly. It's delicious, ice cold, and it makes my mouth a much better place. This line feels like it was written by a calculator. It's so dry. I flush. My inner goddess is down on bended knee with her hands clasped in supplication, begging me. I have two observations. First, kudos to E.L. James for spending a day in the thesaurus sniffing for that supplication word. Second, for some reason, I don't know if it's my brain or something else, but for some reason, I imagine she was given the toilet a blowjob. <laughs> What about this story? Well, it's so bad, I had to remind myself someone like J.K. Rowling wasn't dead every time I spotted a blood hole. I needed to restore some faith. The story is so bad that I hated my cat after finishing it. I don't know why I hated my cat, but I felt as though I needed to stab it. This book was so bad it made me aggressive. If she hadn't sold those many copies, if she wasn't smart and didn't market her book properly, no traditional publisher in the right mind would have picked up her book. 
and further she would have still been 125 million copies shorter you think you can be as smart with numbers as she is then by all considerations go ahead and take that smooth sailing to obscurity you do you because that's what you will be doing To combat the problems I've mentioned above, you have to do these four things. First, take criticism of your own work. The first step toward writing a good story is to be critical of it yourself. The second is to get your critique partner to be critical of it. The third and the final stage is to release it and let the public swallow it, perhaps with love or perhaps with angry emails. Either way, you will do great by these three steps. The second step is to not aim for self-publishing unless you are ready to do what it takes. The third step is to simply keep writing and holding off until you're old enough. You might have a good taste in stories, you might have the talent, and your will might be immense, but if you're 20 years of age, you're missing 5 good years of brain development. If you're 15, that's 10 years, and if you're 10, just, uh, I don't know. The fourth step is to not believe that the publishers are your enemy, opposite. By scrutinizing you, by making it hard for you to publish and putting gatekeepers, they make you a better writer. Don't be lazy, be a writer. I hope you took something from this video. Even if it's one idea, it's all worth it for me. I get to help someone become a better writer. Subscribe if you have learned something and have a great time punching your keyboard. Have a lovely day. I love you.